Hi y'all, this is The Unexpected Wonder and I'm coming to y'all today to talk about the subject of milking a series. Alright, a lot of people misunderstand this as well as pretty much every subject. So, I'm here to explain some things. Now, what is milking a series? That is, this, it's a gray area. Like many things, it's a gray area. But, at the same time, it's a concrete thing. Sounds contradictory. Not really. And I'll explain why. When you have a very popular character, everybody wants more. Okay? When you have a very popular series of and a bunch of different characters, a bunch of likable characters, you know, they're funny, they're extraordinary, they're odd, they're epic. There are a lot of these things. They're charismatic, you know. People want more and more. How it's done is pivotal. It can be a short series or it can be a long-lasting series. It can be an annoying series. It can be a series that people want never pretty much to end. Or to at least end, sometimes you want it to end well. You don't want to bad end it. Number one, milking a series. The first thing, the first most pivotal point, what determines whether a series is milked or not. If you don't know, all right. I'll start with this. What is, what do people mean by milking a series? They mean that you've taken a series and you've stretched it long beyond its lifetime of what it should have been. Like, people kept adding and adding, companies kept adding and adding and adding on additions, you know, to something that didn't need it. Number one, the writing of the series is pivotal. Everything, you don't, not, no matter if it's video games, any form of animation, you know, uh, any form of literature, all that, pretty much forms of entertainment, you, the writing that the author or authors do, the illustrations, all that, that goes into that, if it is bad writing, it's likely going to be a milk series if it continues on. It can be saved, but bad writing is bad writing. That's really what makes a series horrible. Bad writing. Number two point of what, what determines whether a series is milked or not. World expansion. How broad is the world or universe that you use? Is there hundreds, maybe thousands of characters that are important? Not just what is called fodder. Not just what are these minor characters that are one-shotters, you know. We don't care about them. Do we care about the characters? Do you know? Do we actually care about the world? Do we want to see more? That's huge. Number three, repetition. How often is a theme used? How often is a style used? These are key. These are pivotal. And the last point, if I would have to make a last point, repetition. I'm trying to think. Is there any more that I I could cover about what determines a milk series? I guess you have to go with the protagonist. Protagonist is huge. You know, there may be multiple protagonists, but the main, main one. How good of a character is the main protagonist? So I guess the four points. Writing. Is it good or bad writing? World expansion. You know, the care, the amount of characters, the, the value of each character, the uh, can much more be made to the story, to the world, to the universe, whatever it happens to be, the grand scale of things. Repetition of usage, and then the protagonist. Is the protagonist a bad protagonist? And meaning, has no character growth, you know, the plot has nothing to do practically with the character, the writer has gone beyond the character. Okay, now let me give you some examples. A lot of people feel that DBZ, you know, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, all that, it should have stopped a long time ago. They should have stopped making it. Some points you can say maybe it's a little bit milked, a little bit. But is it really milked? Some people want it, no, just let it die back. No, no. DBZ, Dragon Ball, there is, look, Toriyama made a world, a universe that is expansive. Like, number one, I'll hit all four points. Number one, the writing, phenomenal writing. It would not be as popular. I mean, it's a combat. It's a bunch of combat. It's a bunch of combat. My bad, y'all. It's a bunch of combat. It's a battle manga. The anime, phenomenal. 
it's not the greatest ever. I you could say it's the greatest anime for because of collective overall thing, you know. Some may say it's not. It is what it is. It's up there with one of the greats. You understand? It's legendary. That in itself, good writing. Number two, the world, like I said, the universe, he continually expanded upon it. Continually expanded. Each character had death. Now, some characters lost along the way. That's because the story took a different form. A lot of people whine about that, but that's just how the story went. Number three, repetition. It was repetitive, but it wasn't a bad type of repetition because more stronger and stronger characters, which led to the development of the main protagonist, which was Goku. So, there you go. You know, it kept, at the end of the day, even though there was other characters that became powerful, his friends, his allies, and even the villains, at the end of the day, Goku, it somehow, full circle, brought back to Goku. So it met all four criteria. There was a, remember this, like between the end of the Boo saga, uh, the end of the fight with Kid Boo, and the world tournament, ten years elapsed. There's a lot of leeway. Then there's elements, you know, the pan element, the, the oob element, that, that were added to it. You know, can Goku reach a higher level? And all these other kind of things. It's not milked. It's definitely, there's a lot of expansion that can be done. Depends on how it's done, but there's a lot of expansion that could be done. Milk series. Oh, another milk uh, series that is not milk. Crash Bandicoot. I, to this day, would consider buying a Crash Bandicoot game. Because of each character that that um, Sony or whoever produced Crash Bandicoot. Excellent job. Excellent job. You know, it's not just about Crash Bandicoot. It's about the whole cast. But at the end of the day, Crash Bandicoot, they could have so many more powers. Just from game one to game two, they enhanced his powers. And then they kept going and going. And the abilities that surrounded him. Epic. Epic. Spiral was pretty... Less than Crash Bandicoot, but they did a great job too. They did a great job. Um, You know, these are very interesting characters. Characters you wouldn't think about. Now, some Milk series. Mario. Mario, look, man, how many Super Marios have they made? You know, I'm not against Mario. Mario is, you know, from a child, one of the favorite characters. Mario's just awesome. Luigi. I mean, they great characters. But you want to talk about milking a series? Re repetition? Okay? How many of the same? Yeah, people are going to still buy it. There's a nostalgic. I mean, Mario's just an awesome, cool character. There's a younger set. But really, Mario, just stop making these games, man. Unless you want to start with the whole Yoshi thing. Now, that was cool. Toad, you know, more on um, Princess Peach. Stuff like that. If you want to start expanding like they did with Wario. If you want to start expanding to these other characters. But just the, the whole just focus on Mario or even Luigi. It's just getting old. It's getting old. It really is. Too much repetition. Sonic. You want to talk about the king of repetition. Sonic. Sonic, I mean, God, it's so frustrating because Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, now they've expanded. I like the, the whole Shadow the Hedgehog game theme. You know, when they transform Sonic. But too often do you see the old, same old, same old star, style of gameplay with Sonic. They could do more into Hypersonic. Maybe a whole game on that or something like that. You know, Tails. Do his own adventures. Make his own legend. You know, there's so much they could do with Sonic. But when you start repeating, that's usually what kills a series. When you start repeating. Repeating is... Uh, and it start, when you start repeating bad writing starts happening, you know what to expect. Too much with Eggman and all these, you know, come on, man. And then, when you have um, another example, Mega Man. I've said this several times with people. Yo, how many Mega Man games have they made? It's got to be in the 20s, 30s, okay? Same thing with Final Fantasy. Like, yo, how much can y'all honestly change at this point? All these expansions, but come on, man. People are going to buy, but really... It's milking a series. I hope I explained some things. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me y'all thoughts on um on this subject. And uh, see y'all next time. Peace.